Let's take a moment to think about just how many really good dinosaur movies there are. There's the obvious Jurassic Park, then there's The Land Before Time, the 1933 King Kong, and that's it. Toy Story has dinosaurs in it, I'm not sure that counts. There are a few mediocre ones, the 2005 King Kong, The Lost World, The Flintstones maybe, Journey to the Centre of the Earth at a push. Jurassic World kind of hovers somewhere around these two. It depends on how I'm feeling to where it actually sits, but the general consensus amongst the masses is that it's fairly mediocre. But then we come to the bad dinosaur movies. And there's a lot. A hell of a lot. But why? Why does Hollywood struggle to make a decent dinosaur movie? Why are they seemingly doomed to be B-list schlocky creature features with titles like Carnosaur or Jurassic Games? Okay, let's take a look at the good dinosaur movies. The Land Before Time was released in 1988 and is a Don Bluth animation about an orphaned brontosaurus who makes some friends and journeys to find their families. It's a gut-wrenching, beautifully animated movie which spawned 13, yes, 13 sequels. Clearly the original did something right, resonating with young audiences and being the first Hollywood animated movie to feature dinosaurs. Some things you see with your eyes, others you see with your heart. The 1933 King Kong was a masterpiece. It hasn't exactly aged well, but for something made almost 90 years ago with nowhere near the technology we have now, it's mind-blowing. Real actors interact with stop-motion dinosaurs as well as King Kong himself, and it introduced audiences to a whole new world. Then there's Jurassic Park, the focus of the video, and whilst it's undoubtedly the greatest dinosaur movie ever made, it's also one of the greatest movies ever made, period. So what makes Jurassic Park so great? Well, there is no one thing which makes Jurassic Park great, more like a number of things which come together perfectly, kind of like a bunch of ingredients making a cake. There's the original novel by Michael Crichton, and from that we have our characters, our premise, our basic story. We then have a fantastic screenwriter to adapt the novel, the biggest director in the world, an unbeatable cast of actors, Stan Winston's animatronics, ILM's brand new CGI technology, and of course the score by John Williams. Okay, fine, Jurassic Park had a team of filmmakers behind it who were at the top of their game, but then so did the Lost World Jurassic Park and Jurassic Park 3. So what was different? Why didn't the sequels receive the same reactions? Well, there's one thing that Jurassic Park has which neither the Lost World nor Jurassic Park 3 have. And the clue is in the title of the movie. Jurassic Park may be a dinosaur movie, but it's its setting which makes it unique. The park in Jurassic Park is something we have all seen, just perhaps not quite in the same way. We've all been to zoos and theme parks. We've stood there gawping at how big the elephants are or how proud the lions look. It's something familiar, something we may even do regularly. It's relatable and it's recognisable. Do you know what isn't relatable or recognisable? I mean, I don't want to speak for everybody here, but I highly doubt that most of the people watching this have ever been chased by a predator through the jungle. If you have, then fair enough, but it's not exactly something the majority of us can relate to. I can relate to this, uh, Donald. Sit down. but I can't relate to this. This, yes. This, no. Jurassic Park took the mundane, the normal, and flipped it. It's such a simple yet genius concept. What if there was a zoo for dinosaurs? It's the concept which sets Jurassic Park high above any other dinosaur movie out there, including its own sequels. Take The Lost World for example. Not only is there no theme park here, but the movie isn't even set on the same island. Jurassic Park took place on Isla Nublar, whereas The Lost World takes place on an entirely separate island called Isla Sauna, the place where the dinosaurs were actually bred. Which begs the question why they're creating and breeding dinosaurs and keeping embryos on Isla Nublar if that's what Isla Sauna's for, but we'll ignore that. So effectively, what's happened here is that they've taken the park out of Jurassic Park. And the same goes for Jurassic Park 3, which is also set on Isla Sauna, miles from anything even remotely resembling a park. Not a swing set, nor a slide to be found. 
Jurassic Park, even though it's a sci-fi movie, sits just on the edge of plausibility. The science behind the how and the why the dinosaurs exist is explained to us, and it plays a major part in the overall plot of the movie. There is a reason for the dinosaurs to be there, not simply because they are. We're not yet at the point of being able to produce a living dinosaur. Not as far as we know anyway, but we see tasters that at some point it might be possible, such as with Dolly the Sheep in the 90s or the recent human-pig hybrid which has been doing the rounds. But the movie raises the question of what if? What if science was able to recreate and reintroduce dinosaurs? The science, to our non-scientific minds, sounds plausible. I mean, it makes sense. You grab the DNA from the arse end of a mosquito, use some fancy schmancy techniques to screw around with frogs, and then bingo! Dino DNA! That seems like pretty sound science to me. It's got me questioning if it's that easy why we don't have dinosaur theme parks in real life already. So in Jurassic Park, we have the running and the chomping, but we also have the park and the science, the two biggest factors which separate Jurassic Park from others in the genre. But then, why does the Lost World and Jurassic Park 3 forget all this? Yes, we have a few sciencey looking locations, some of the same characters from the first movie and of course the dinosaurs, but that's it. Where's the science? Where's the plausibility? Where's the park? The first movie even teased a sequel with Dennis Nedry's lost can of embryos. Just think what could have happened here. Biosyn could have retrieved them and developed their own park. Yes, they established that there's only enough coolant in there for them to survive for 72 hours, but we're talking about dinosaurs here, so come on, there can be a little leeway. Besides, Jurassic Part 2 could have been set days following the first, there's no reason for it to have been set years later, let alone on a second island full of dinosaurs where they didn't even reference how or why the fences went down, so why they all loose anyway, but that's something else we'll forget. So whilst The Lost World has the same team of creatives behind it, with the removal of the science and the park, suddenly we have a movie taking place on an island filled with dinosaurs. And there's only so many different stories that can take place on an island like that. And they all involve running. Jurassic Park 3 goes even further to remove what made Jurassic Park Jurassic Park. Yes, Sam Neill returns and Laura Dern shows up to inexplicably save the day, but the movie could have any title. Escape from Spooky Dino Island 3D. It doesn't matter. The only link it has to Jurassic Park is Dr. Grant and sprinklings of InGen. They even kill off the fan-favourite dinosaur in favour of bringing in a big new baddie, something which did not go down well. It doesn't matter if you have great actors, great characters and great filmmakers behind your movie. If all they're doing is running away from dinosaurs, then there's only so much you're going to achieve. But let's not forget about the N-word. Nostalgia. How old were you when you first saw Jurassic Park, or The Land Before Time, or King Kong? You were most likely a kid, and the one thing you can pretty much guarantee with kids is that they freaking love dinosaurs. If you're a kid and seeing Jurassic Park, this movie with plausible science and amazing visual effects, it's going to have a pretty huge impact. It's new and exciting, of course it is! So what's new about The Lost World and Jurassic Park 3? The new characters? The new second island? It's nowhere near enough to hit audiences with that same feeling of awe and spectacle. We've seen dinosaurs now. How are you going to top that? Cut to 14 years later and the series is given the soft reboot treatment with Jurassic World, the second best movie in the Jurassic Park saga. And I wonder why that is. Finally, the filmmakers have realised what's at the heart of Jurassic Park. The park itself. And after all these years, we are shown what a fully operational dinosaur theme park looks like. It's something that we were teased with in the original, but now we get to see it in all its glory, complete with brand new attractions which offer a fresh spectacle. It's what the sequel to Jurassic Park should have been, keeping that core idea at the forefront. And it's not just about the dinosaurs, it's the park, and the park setting is what drives the plot. It would be like making the sequel to Avatar but not setting it on Pandora. Pandora is the reason the story takes place, so you don't want to take that away. If you take Pandora away, you basically just have the Smurfs. And it's not like Jurassic World has anything else particularly going for it. The CGI is fairly average by today's standards, the characters aren't particularly memorable and the script is hardly on fire. But it works because we get to see what would actually happen in a dinosaur theme park if the fences went down. Something that after the lost world we thought we'd never get to see. 
And after the shambles of what happened to the T-Rex in Jurassic Park 3, we finally have redemption with the original Isla Nublar Rexy. Plus A-listers Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard helped make the movie a bajillion dollars. Things were back on track for Jurassic Park. That is, until... Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom was released in 2018, and once again takes the action away from the park. Of course there's the question of why the hell a bunch of genius scientists built a multi-billion dollar theme park on a dormant or even active volcano, but that's something else we'll ignore. The movie focuses on trying to save the remaining roaming dinosaurs on Isla Nublar so they can supposedly relocate them onto an island which isn't in the midst of exploding. Will this lead to another theme park? Only time will tell. And time said... No. In what is probably the most jarring switch so far in the Jurassic universe, we have a storyline involving a secret underground Resident Evil-inspired lab where an auction takes place selling off the dinosaurs to Russians and villains and who the hell knows what. In true Jurassic style, it all goes a bit wrong and in the end the dinosaurs are let loose into America. It tries to do something different, but by practically switching genres it maybe even goes too far. What started as a sci-fi adventure movie set in a theme park is now a human cloning horror movie which seems to be laying the foundations for what will happen in Jurassic World 3. It's by far the messiest of all the Jurassic sequels and not even Toby Jones's Trump-inspired flappy hair could do anything to save it. It's as far from a Jurassic Park movie as a movie can get, and yet, here we are. We have slapstick comedy mixed with monsters, mixed with sadness, mixed with human cloning. And after the success of Jurassic World, what made the apple want to fall this far from the tree? Perhaps Jurassic World 3 can salvage things. Based on where Fallen Kingdom left off, there are several routes they can take. Maybe the government have established a nature reserve for dinosaurs on the outskirts of the suburbs and are fighting to keep the monsters away from civilization. Maybe the Russians will attack America with an army of Indoraptors. Maybe it's basically going to be Rise of the Planet of the Dinosaurs. Or maybe those rumours of dinosaur-human hybrids from years ago will come to fruition and they'll completely ruin the series forever. And I'm genuinely concerned that this is the way they're going to go. But if you think about it, just how many movies can you make about a dinosaur theme park? You have one great movie, one fairly good movie, and three pretty bad ones. And it's surely no coincidence that the bad ones don't even feature the park the movie is named after. Not all movies suit a sequel, despite how beloved it is or how much money it makes. The Jurassic Park series may have more misses than it does hits, but regardless of how many bad sequels they make, it'll never take anything away from the greatness of the original. Jurassic Park was lightning in a bottle. It was just the right people making just the right movie at just the right time. Thanks for watching, I really, really appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this, then please do hit that like button, please subscribe to the channel, and let me know which movies you'd like to be covered. Thanks again, and I hope to see you next time.